What is going on guys? Shaz here. Today guys I'm going to be talking about whether Android 2.1 Eclair is still usable right now in 2019. Android 2.1 Eclair was released in January 2010 as a small upgrade over Android 2.0 Eclair released earlier. How does that hold up in 2019? I'm sure when it was released, it was treated like Android Pie is now. Like, oh, is my phone going to be getting Android 2.1? But, guys, obviously the hype about Android 2.1 isn't the same as back in 2010. This phone is a ZTE racer, which I was able to get from a refurbished phone shop near me, and it is actually quite a good device. It's not like anything like the phones we have now, like I would show you my Galaxy S9, but I'm using it to record this video, so I can't do that. But guys, if you look at today's phones, like the S10, the S9, the Pixel, all that, you are going to see a lot of differences between these phones. Honestly, this does feel like a very solid device, and it's got hardware buttons for the home button, the menu, the back button, and the answer and decline calls, and the bezels are very thick, but back then that was actually normal. But I did get a good deal on it, I only had to pay £10 for it, which was very good for a phone, but honestly it is old, don't expect to be like getting even like a Galaxy S5 for this amount. But guys, it was a fairly good deal, to be honest. And I'm quite glad I got this. So guys, turning it on, it actually appears to be running Android near stock, Android 2.1 Eclair. There are a few free branded apps on here, but this is expected because this is a carrier version. And I'm not going to install a custom ROM on it. I don't even think there are custom ROMs available for it. And even if there were, for the sake of keeping this as close to how it was released as possible, I would still keep it on Android 2.1 Eclair. Even if there were like new girl ROMs available or anything, I would still keep it on Android 2.1 Eclair, mainly for historical purposes. But yeah, that's that. And the UI looks very, very cheap and very very ugly and back then that was normal if you like look at samsung's touch Wiz from like 2014 you are going to see you're going to think that touch Wiz was the most beautiful ui ever compared to this this ui remains until like android 4.0 when when they started cleaning up the ui a little bit and making it look a bit more polished but guys this does look really really cheap and Android phones were cheap carrier branded devices back then. They weren't like smooth gaming, high power devices that you have them as now. So they, back then, everyone would have bought an iPhone if they wanted a premium looking and feeling phone. Because Android phones just didn't make the cut back then. Which was a real shame. It was quite a bad start for Android. But that is that. Now, app support is obviously going to be very bad. This is a very old version of Android. And even the Android market does not work anymore on this phone. And it, it, it does still work on Android 2.2 Froyo. But it has been dropped for Android 2.1 Eclair. Which honestly makes sense. Because this phone is so old. And so is the Android Eclair operating system. And also there aren't many apps you can sideload either. Because a lot of apps developers will have migrated to newer Android SDK versions by now. Even attempting to sideload apps. The phone is having basically none of it. With problems passing the package appearing on any post-2014 application I could find, even at the old versions of Firefox and Chrome, just weren't having it with this Android version. However, I was lucky enough to find APKs for Angry Birds, an old version of Opera Mini, and an old version of Touchpad. Angry Birds is an old version too, and they all work 
perfectly fine. Opera makes browsing the web a lot less painful than on the default stock browser. Obviously, it's not going to be a very good experience. There are going to be a lot of pages which, aren't, which still aren't going to display properly. But it does make a significant and very significant improvement against, against the stock browser. So... Unfortunately, I do have to use my fingers to type. I can't just use my thumb like I would on a what? Alright. I'm not sure, but obviously the screen is going to sometimes cause you to press on things you don't want to press on. But it is easy to get used to if you don't mind. I know a lot of people buy the iPhone SE because of its screen size, but... But hardly anyone like would buy an Android with a screen so nowadays because they know how brilliant large Android phones are and how much more premium they look compared to smaller Android phones. But guys, this version of Opera Mini sure makes browsing the web less painful and the touch power keyboard definitely makes typing a lot less painful, which is a plus. And Angry Birds is a game you can play if you're feeling bored. But honestly, guys, it does still work. These free apps, they still work perfectly fine as though this was a new and great operating system. But the current versions of the apps do not work. So the performance on this is actually fairly good. It's better than I expected. I've like seen videos of people using the original Galaxy Note on its stock ROM and it's really slow and pretty much unusable. But this is a much more fast than I thought. I'm not sure. I think this is about 192 megabytes of RAM, which is actually quite good back then for a phone like phones would be just cheap devices that would be smart basically but now that isn't very good but navigating the user interface and stuff definitely is perfectly usable even though it's not the best experience it is still really fast on stock applications and it's obviously still quite usable as a phone So using it as a phone, I don't actually have a SIM card inserted in this, so I can't like show its usage as a phone. This is a free branded device, and its previous owner did not unlock it, and I am not a free user. The free reception signals are actually quite bad here, but, but I'm sure it worked perfectly fine as a phone. And I'm sure it can basically be a smartphone, like a phone that's actually quite smart. Obviously, it's not smart by today's standards, but guys, it, if you want a basic phone, this gives you all the benefits of a smartphone. At the same time, it's providing a basic experience. And even though its user interface looks cheap and unpolished, and hardly any apps work on it, there are apps that do work on it. And that's definitely a good thing. So overall, is it still usable in 2019? While it is actually still usable, it's not like any major defects, like it being unable to work as a phone. Unless you want to buy it as, like, as a collector's item or maybe a short-term backup phone, then I really would not recommend buying any Android 2.1 phone. But if you just want like a collector's item or just a backup phone, that will be short term that you don't expect you to last like more than a year or two then this is definitely a very good phone and so are all other android 2.1 phones and is it still usable obviously not in the app industry even though there are old versions of apps that do work it's still not really supported with many apps and old, and there are hardly any old versions of apps I could actually find. I did have to do some digging around. But guys, it definitely is a good for a phone that offers the benefits of a smartphone in 2019 or as a collector's item, which I'm keeping this as. So yes, guys, thank you for watching this video. I really hope you enjoyed, and you now know whether Android 2.1 is usable in 2019. 
and I really hope you enjoyed this. Please make sure to leave a like, subscribe, turn on notifications. What phone do you still use in 2019? How old is it? And is the experience good? Leave your opinions below in the comment section. Goodbye.